When you make a 999 call, you'll get through to the BT operator first, and they'll ask you what service you require. So the choice is police, fire, ambulance, or the Coast Guard. If you don't say anything, you'll get automatically put through to the police. So you'll need to request the fire service if you want to come through to us. When you get through to fire control, they'll say fire service. And then the first thing they'll want to know is the address uh, wherever the incident is. So make sure you don't give your home address if the incident is somewhere else. And uh, then just really clearly say what, what is happening right now and why the fire service are required. You should call the fire service if there's a fire, any sort of smoke, any road traffic collisions, people stuck, life risk incidents involving water or animals, um, chemical incidents, or anything where you're unsure whether it's a fire service incident, you can always just call us um, and we can let you know whether it's us or someone else who should be attending. Before you make a 999 call, it's really important that you know where you are because that's the main piece of information that we need because we can mobilise on an address even if you're still telling us what's happening at the incident. Uh, so we really need a postcode or a road name or what three words. What Through Words is an app. If you don't have it downloaded already, we can send you a link via text message that you can click on on your phone. But it's really useful if you've already got it downloaded and you've already had a play around with it so you know how it works. Uh, if you go on to What Through Words, it will show you a map. You can zoom in. There'll be a little person. You can put yourself exactly where you are and it will give you three words, which are a three by three meter square of where you're standing. And you can pass us those three words, which will give us a location. So depending on what you're reporting, we could ask a range of questions. Once we've got the initial location, we'll want to know how many people are involved and what, what exactly is happening. So if it's a fire, we'll want to know where in the property the fire is or where outside and how many people are around, uh, whether anyone has been affected by whatever is happening, uh, any chemicals or hazards that are involved uh, and the best access to the location. If you are panicking, we understand that people don't call 999 every day, so we are used to that, but it's really helpful if you speak slowly because otherwise we're just going to have to get you to repeat. And especially with unusual road names or unusual words that you're saying, like chemical names, we're going to have to ask you to spell them out for us. So it's really good if you're listening to our questions and you are answering the questions that we're asking you rather than rambling on just because you're very nervous. When you've given us all of the information, we'll repeat the address to you just to make sure we've got the right place. The fire service will already be on the way and you can give us any extra information that you want us to pass to the crews when they're en route so we can pass that extra information via the radio. If we have the ability to stay on the line, we can stay on the line and speak to you and, and help you to remain calm and give you some additional advice until the fire service arrive. If it's a fire, the information that we would be giving you would be things like to get near a window, to shut doors on the way away from the fire, get yourself and everyone in the house in a room the furthest away, maybe hang something colourful out of the window so that the crews can see where you are and to get down low on the ground. If it's an on-call station, they're out of the door within five minutes, so when they get their alerter and their pager goes off, they leave wherever they are, their house or their place of work, and they're, they're leaving in the fire engine within five minutes. If they are a hold home station where they work every day, then they'll be out of the door within two minutes. While we're waiting for the fire engine to arrive, we would usually advise that the caller stay well back from whatever the incident is, but it, it does depend. So if there are casualties, they might be able to give us casualty information. So that is helpful to us to then tell the ambulance uh, how many people are involved and what, what's wrong with them. So if they can stand somewhere really visible for when the fire engine arrives, that could potentially be at the roadside or near a gate or an entrance to a property and flag the crews down so that they know that's the entrance they need to come in uh, using and then show, show the crew where the incident is and explain what's happened and then the crew will take over.